recapping game one and game two of the finals. In game one, Celtics beat the Warriors 120 to 108. Game two, they lost 88 to 107. Series is tied 1 1. They're going to Boston next for the next two games. So now, Drew, what do you what have you been seeing in this series? What do you project to happen in game three? Are you worried in the slightest about your Boston Celtics? Definitely not worried. I would have been worried if after game one, down 15, they didn't come back from double digits in chase and win by double digits. I would be concerned if that wasn't the case. But that was the script for game one of the finals. So for game two, for them to come out flat in the start of the second half, Golden State Warriors absolutely dominated both sides of the court. It was inevitable. As long as you got one in chase, if you're the Celtics, you cannot complain whatsoever. I'm not worried by any means. First game, Jason Tatum struggled shooting, and they won by double digits. And also, it speaks to his greatness because he didn't have to impact the game in terms of scoring. He impacted the game in terms of defense, in terms of facilitating the basketball. So, as long as they got one, I was fine with it. I wasn't expecting a 2-0 sweep at home, uh, excuse me, away against the Warriors. That would have been egregious, and then I would have started to, to call out for a sweep, truthfully. But I wasn't expecting it. I'm optimistic if I'm the Celtics. We took one uh, in one of the most hostile environments to play in. You're going back to your home court. If I'm the Celtics, I realize that this was a bad shooting performance for us. In game two, of course. We couldn't hit We couldn't hit shots come the, the third quarter. Defensively, we were allowing Steph Curry to do whatever he wanted. The Warriors were hitting shots and they were playing great defense. They had to. They knew the pressure was on them once that second, once that second half started. Because the Celtics were playing right with them. And and I was a little concerned at the start of the game where in the first quarter, it seemed as if the Celtics were dominating. And even still, the Warriors won the first quarter, won the second quarter. So it, it just spoke to just the, the different type of energy that the Warriors were coming with. And I have to acknowledge Draymond Green. The way he was able to impact the game with his mouth it was Insane pause. pause, of course, <laughs> but it's what? it's it's the truth. The way that he was able to get underneath these guys, their skin <laughs> just be, keeps going. Yeah, no, of course, <laughs> but get under their skin. That's a thing to say. Well, you said underneath these guys, <laughs> underneath these guys' skin. Of course, that's a thing. But that's also very true. Well, but however, you know, you guys listen with your crazy minds. Draymond was able to bother these guys and take them off their game, and that's one hundred percent a credit to Draymond. He his game, his impact. Is bigger than just his skills, and it was evident last night. So, excuse me, credit to the Warriors for sure, but not worried in the slightest. I'm feeling very good if I'm the Celtics. Go home as long as you split at, um, excuse me, at uh, at the Garden. You should be in the series, no doubt. It's interesting because when you look at games one and two, almost for seventy five percent of these games, they're basically the same game. I mean, that's you, facts. When you look at halftime, both halves were decided by one possession. It was very competitive throughout the first half. And then in the third quarter, the Warriors, it's the Warriors patented third quarter. I mean, they just took over, winning both of them very convincingly in the, in game two, especially 35 to 14. They won by a couple of touchdowns in that third mm-hmm. quarter. So they're always going to be dominant. It's their point of emphasis to take over right out of the gate in the second half. But then the fourth quarter is obviously in game one. It was the Derek White and Al Horford show, as we know. And, and Jalen Brown. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Jalen Brown was great in game one just in general. For but sure. Yeah, they opened the fourth quarter in a dominant fashion. And in the fourth quarter of game two, the Warriors just, they kept their foot on the gas. They did not allow those things to happen. They sat Steph Curry for the whole fourth quarter and didn't it didn't bother them. They didn't really need him to play at all. So that's good for them when you look at his you know stamina and the playoffs going forward. Being able to sit him there down the stretch is definitely a valuable thing. But it, yeah, it clearly, it's interesting what you said, uh, Drew, about you know, being worried about the Celtics and whatnot because them getting game one is obviously very important when you seal a game on the road, you know, in the finals, it, it, any playoff series is going to be important for your team. But the fact that, that Derek White and Al Horford performed as well as they did in that in game one, how did you feel about, you know, people saying after the game, well, Draymond even said it, you know, they're not going to shoot like that again. We're not really worried about it's it. It's been like that also, oh, like the entire playoffs. He's right, though. Whatever you, if you want to think that, fine. But we've seen throughout the entirety of the playoffs, whether it be Al Horford, Grant Williams, Marcus Smart, Derek White, Payne Pritchard, they're all capable of hitting big-time shots and in, in games. Mm-hmm. And we, we've seen it in every single series they've played. That's just him trying to get underneath their skin again. Okay. 
No, I would just say the one thing is that if you agree that he's right and, you know, getting game one is definitely valuable for them, but if you're going to be worried about the Celtics going forward, if that's what they need to win these games, those, you know, freak performances from Horford hitting, you know, whatever, how many threes straight he hit, um, that could just be a point of concern, I think, going forward. It is a point of concern. And this series should be 2-0 Warriors going into Boston. Boston hasn't been a great home team. Uh, I picked Golden State in six. Should be should be 2-0 is hilarious when they blew a 15-point lead going to the And court. they should never blew that lead. But that being what, said. What does that do with anything? That, that being happened. said, the one adjustment they made from game one to game two that I saw is that they just played man. In game one, it was a lot of zone. Game one, game two, they played zone one possession. The Celtics hit a three on that. They went away from it. They played man the entire time. Draymond took the responsibility of getting Jalen Brown. Clay Thompson was on Al Horford. I did not see not. I saw one post up ran for Al Horford. I thought he was fouled on that play. It was in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, Al Horford did not even attempt a three in game two after hitting six in game one. That tells me that, that, that they have already figured that part out. They figured, okay, we're just going to put Clay on Al Horford. He's strong enough to contend with him in the post, and he's going to be able to, to be quick enough to um, help when drivers are driving to the basket and also recover on Al Horford if a pass is made. Game one, Horford, Smart, Derek White combined for 65 points. Game two, it was 18. Draymond Green was absolutely right. I mean, yes, you can count on Horford, Smart, and White to hit occasional big-time shots. But when Marcus Smart has 20, and Al Horford has 26, and Derek White has 21, that's not going to happen. We know it's not going to happen. That You're praying to the gods it happens. Dude, it's happened all playoffs long. Not all at the same time, but can we please like give them some respect? They've hit big shots the entire playoffs. If you would have bet this outcome and on DraftKings, FanDuel, whatever sports book you use, you would have bet ten dollars on them to get twenty plus points plus plus the Celtics winning. You'd probably have fifty thousand dollars right now for sure. That's how unlikely it is for that to happen. And really, the Warriors stayed the same from game one to game two in terms of their splits. Boston's the one that really struggled in game one to game two. Boston in game one, fifty percent from the field. 50% from three. They were great. Game two, 37% from the field, 40% from three. And the defense, the defensive intensity for Golden State was just there. 15 steals in game two. It, they were getting after it offensively, 40 points in the paint. They limited the turnovers. They only had 12. And for, I know you didn't bring this up, Drew, but we talked about it in the group chat a little bit about the refing. I think it's just a way for Celtics fans to complain about what happened. I wasn't going to go that route. Yeah, we talked about it a little before the show. I mean, yeah, and, it was more in the first half, you could argue. But and, in the second half, the Warriors blew them out, so it didn't matter. But you look at the discrepancy. Boston had 18 fouls. Warriors had 17. It was 17 to 20 free throw attempts. That's not enough. That's not a big enough discrepancy for me to say that's a long It was way. lack of whistles. No, were, were there some calls that maybe should have been called or should have not been called? Mm-hmm. I agree. You know, people argue Draymond should he have been tossed out after he that was I'm, on Jalen Brown. That I don't. Think I don't so. agree with that. I agree. The, the Gary Payne foul when he drove to the basket and Jalen Brown barely horrible. touched that him. That was horrible. No, game. not barely. He did not touch him. <laughs> he did not touch him. That to me, though, there of course there's some missed calls, but these refs are human. Of course. But the Warriors were just flat out better, especially in the third quarter. The same way they were they were better in the third quarter in Game One, and then they blew the lead in the fourth. They were better in the third quarter in game in game in game two. Steph Curry going off, Jordan Poole going off late, and then hitting that half court three to end the third quarter, going into the fourth. And the Celtics, Ime, threw in the towel in the fourth for sure. Ten minute mark. Aaron Neesmith is out there. That's when I know the game is over, and you're, you're you have given up on the game. When Aaron Neesmith is out there, he's out there. I already know it's over with. Mm -hmm. The Warriors, to me, made great adjustments. The defensive intensity was there. It was. I felt like the uh, Eagle Dollar being hurt, not that I wanted him to be hurt, but it, it, it allowed Kerr to now play Gary Payne a second, to now give Bielitsa more minutes, and Bielitsa held his own on defense. He did. He provided them spacing and a, a playmaker because he's a pretty good passer. And Gary Payne a second, just the defensive presence that he offers to Golden State is very huge. Now, the way that I think the Celtics can adjust in Game 3 is pretty much easy. Is They have to stop playing drop coverage on these pick-and-roll situations because Steph and Jordan Poole in Game 2, 
were feasting on him, especially Steph. Jordan Poole got going later, but especially Steph. He was feasting. It doesn't matter whether, whether it was Rob Will or Al Horford. They were giving Steph way too much space. I feel very confident about the Warriors in Game 3 and in this series in general because we have not seen Clay be good yet. Uh, Andrew Wiggins has been good on the offensive, uh, on rebounds, offensive boards especially, but he hasn't even gotten going offensively yet. Jordan Poole showed flashes of it in game two, but all around he wasn't, he didn't have an all around consistent game. It's going to click for the Warriors, and when it does, it's going to get scary. I was going to say this where this game was really a domination by the Warriors. He only scored 107 points. Defensively, the Celtics are fine. 100% 100% I agree. They need to start playing up on screens. You can't allow any type of spacing when it comes to Poole or Curry, especially the way that Curry's shooting right now. He's been he's been phenomenal for the Warriors. He's not going to miss those opportunities, and he's going to take them if the Celtics give it to him. But they only let up 100 points here. If I'm the Celtics, I just need to come back, come back and realize we need consistent offense. We are in these games if we are just consistently who we are. And who we've been the entire season. But that's the thing, though. Boston does this. They've they've shown us this in the playoffs. Absolutely. And I, I that's mean, exactly J- why. Brown, why would I be worried? Jalen Brown, great first quarter. He did. I didn't. I didn't know where he was for the rest of the no doubt. three quarters. No doubt. Jason Tatum was the most consistent player on Boston. The fact that he had the the lowest plus minus, I think, just showcases how flawed of a stat plus minus is. Because yeah, I thought he was the best player on the court for them. And Marcus Smart. He was he was giving the ball away like candy on Halloween. <laughs> he was turning the ball over left and right. Already and five. I'm not going to excuse Tatum either because whenever I saw Tatum drive into the basket, he lost the ball. He lost control. There are things to fix for Boston, but these entire playoffs outside of the Brooklyn series and even in the Brooklyn series in moments, their offense is inconsistent. And that's what worries me the most about Boston is that you can't have these type of sluggish stretches when you face a team like Golden State. It's a 1-1 series. Like, the way that you're talking to me right now is as if it's 2-0 and the Celtics haven't been in either game. I'd understand that that logic, and I understand, of course. But you got, you got to come out, you got to be confident. Of both. To a degree, but on your home court in a game one where you're up 15, you're, you basically should just continue to put your foot on their necks. You allow them to come back and win dominantly. I, I think that going to TD, Celtics are fine. They're going to be in their home crowd. The They're same place they their lost home crowd. in Game Six versus Miami. It happens. I'm just saying it does. Jimmy had an all world performance. That's what it took. Steph could do that. He can. Steph the one can thing I'll say about Game One versus Game Two, and a lot of things people were saying was that although Al Horford and Derek White are not going to have the performance that they did in Game after Game One, people were saying that Jason Tatum's not going to perform as poorly as he did in Game One going forward, and it was kind of the exact opposite. Jason Tatum played fine. Like you guys are saying, the best player on on Boston, but they ended up losing that game in game two. So, I mean, you could argue that the Celtics just don't have enough depth going forward in the series, which I think is their biggest issue. I mean, they run a college rotation, Drew, with seven or eight guys. And you could argue two of those guys don't even really contribute that much. Offensively for the Warriors, it's been Curry who has been all world and just guys doing their thing. Kevon Looney gave them a calm, calm 11. Uh, you have Jordan Poole, who had 17. Clay, you said, has struggled, but they kept him in the game to start get going, and even still, he was not hitting his shots. Andrew Wiggins, another one. I think he had 14 points. The Warriors, yes, team-wise, you look at them on paper, and they should have the talent. They have not performed to their standards either. Okay, but those players well, are better players yeah. than the players that the and Celtics the difference are And the difference is that with Boston and Golden State, just look at Boston first. Marcus Smart, you'll live with some of the things he does. Derek White, you don't really have to worry about. Uh, you can leave him alone on offense. You're not losing sleep over that. Uh, Al Horford, you know, you have to respect him a little bit. Derek White hits Rob open will, shots. That's Rob you Will, you don't even have to worry about He's him He's not an there. offensive guy. With Golden State, they do have more depth. And even if Clay is playing poorly, Ryan Rosillo said this on, his pod, on, on Bill Simmons' podcast. I thought it was a great statement. Even if he's performing poorly... He is, at worst, an average defender and the world's greatest three-point shooting decoy. Yeah, he's deadly. You can't leave him alone. Like, not worry about it. If Clay can be 0 for 20 
and you will still guard up on him like he's hit his last 10 shots. That's the difference. Um, and in t- terms of the depth, they lost Iguodala. They instantly had Gary Payne, Bayelitsa to step in. Guys like Fawn Toscano Anderson, who I think should get some playoff minutes, and he's a very good player. I think he's a very good player. He's not even getting any minutes. Moses Moody not getting any minutes. Kaminga not getting any minutes. Very good, I mean, strong. He's a serviceable role player. I, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, he's good for his We're role. We're digging into the depth. I know, I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, the Warriors have guys who have, are not going to play these finals that I think would be in the Celtics rotation. Maybe I don't. I don't think Juan Toscano Anderson and those guys at the end of the bench Stop are it. better than Toscano. No, stop Derek it. White. Stop it! Stop it! Derek, Derek, White. Derek White. Derek White's been really good defensively. I don't disagree overly on his offense. However, yeah. he can hit an open jump shot. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And to, to your point about the short rotation, I think e- even though the depth is a bit of a concern, like I think around this time in the playoffs, every team goes into this shorter rotation. No, that's and, true. And we don't see like Curry played 40 minutes and he only got four minutes of rest. I think at, at, at in the beginning of the second quarter, in the first uh, four minutes of the second quarter. Uh, because without Steph, they basically fall apart. And it's on those lineups with Clay and Wiggins and Poole to now step up for offensively. Sure. And, and specifically Poole, who has been huge for them all season long, comes in game one, really drops drops the ball there, but definitely has a stronger performance in game two. But even still, 17 points. It was a domination, so you weren't asking too much over uh, too much of him if you're the Warriors. But even still, if I'm the Celtics, I understand we played horribly offensively, we just need to be better going forward. And they can. They've shown it. 